Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now quite a few of you have been asking for my mastery setups and the way how it laid out and uh, this video is going to be exactly that. I'm going to show you uh, the mastery setups that I am currently using, all three of them. And we're going to start with kind of like a generic basic setup. This setup is something pretty much that I use in my Battlegrounds decks as well as majority of the Alliance War offense unless I need some specific changes to it. And in general questing, so uh, the offense is fairly standard with maxed out precision and cruelty. And there is one minor mistake. Typically, I do have my deep wounds maxed out alongside with despair. This time around, I just have one point kind of haggling in the defense that should not be there. But for the most part, you can see that it's a fairly basic setup. I don't typically run Assassin's Mastery or Glass Cannon in my generic setups. Uh, defense. Uh, here we have one extra point that should not be there in Stand Your Ground. I typically, typically run four points in Stand Your Ground. At the moment, it's standing at five. But defense is primarily, again, max uh, recovery, max block proficiency, uh, max willpower, and max inequity. And then my proficiencies are as follows. Two points in parry, maxed out limber, maxed out stupefy, one point in dex, and five in mystic dispersion. So that's kind of like my more generic setup for majority of the time in the game moving on we're going to be taking a look at my defensive setup and here we can see that uh, i am maxing out uh, courage uh, the reason for that is because when your champions this is the setup that's going to be set as my alliance for defense setup and the reason why you can max out courage is well because every fight Pretty much in alliance war your defenders are going to go down in health so they're going to actually be able to benefit from courage additionally i do maxed out assassins because if opponent has made mistakes when their parry fails randomly it's very good and you can shut down you know immortality if somebody's using hercules or something of the sort a uh, couple points in unfazed as well just in case anybody's using mr negative or snarky and spider-man or some of the other waders and obviously still the maxed out despair and then in defense, it's basically the same or similar uh, with max stand your ground, max inequity, and just the one point in willpower. Because of the way willpower works with the extra um, health the defenders have, basically the impact of willpower is significantly smaller. So I figured I'm not going to be maxing out that uh, for alliance war, uh, defense. But yeah, this is a specific alliance war defense. Right, and then we have obviously pretty much the same here in proficiencies because I do place a Mystic Defender. If I did not place a Mystic Defender, obviously I would have five more points that I could distribute in between offense and defense. But since I do, I have a Mangog, I believe, on defense at the moment and likely in the next season. So uh, Mystic Dispersion stays there. And next, if we take a look at the third setup this is my recoil setup this is the setup that i do for more casual questing this is the setup that i have on obviously for arena and uh yeah uh when you do your recall setup i always say that you have to pick two out of three you can have recalls and then you can have either deep wounds or you have you can have mystic dispersion so with this setup in particular i have chosen to leave myself with mystic dispersion maxed out mystic dispersion obviously the maxed out willpower here we do not have inequity anymore because we do need the extra points elsewhere everything else pretty much the same uh, as my standard defense setup and then offensively i still do find it worth to max out despair uh, because i absolutely love that mastery find it absolutely invaluable and obviously we have maxed out precision cruelty one point in glass cannon one point in recall and maxed out double edge and liquid courage so these are basically the three setups that I use. Obviously, now, finally, one thing that I'm super happy with is the fact that I will be able to play with Recall Masteries more and easier, and it's going to be cheaper to switch in between them. So I think that is definitely going to have quite a huge impact. It's probably going to give me a bit extra time or ability to grind some arena. Obviously, it's still going to cost 35 units. Uh, but yeah, so for most part, these are the setups themselves so i can take the screenshots i'm going to go over them again right now so we're going to start with my main setup 
uh, this is the defense and this is the proficiencies. Then we're gonna go to my alliance with defense setup. This is gonna be what I'm gonna be using for that and already do. And this is going to be my recall mastery setup. Primarily for you know monthly event quests, side events. I actually like to play alliance quest with this setup as well, because then you know Herc just demolishes everything even faster, and CGR does as well. Uh, right. So this is my recall setup, recall setup defense and proficiencies. As far as individual masteries go, and to explain some use of it in my daily situations, especially in more kind of like significant fights. I definitely quite strongly advise against assassin because the worst thing about assassin is you can't rely on it and uh, there are more and more situations where assassin can kind of mess you over because it can switch off some of the beneficial nodes or abilities that you expect to activate we all know how it can hinder you against thing and a quite few other situations i do spec assassin as we saw for alliance with defense and then also at times for something like Abyss of Legends or something does require me to shift my mastery setup specifically for offense or with sword. But Assassin, I'm definitely kind of moved away from that. Uh, another definite shout out if we're talking about masteries, because this is meant to also be kind of like a little bit of a, you know explanatory video, is Despair. Despair is a mastery I do not want to leave my home without. Pretty much in every single setup that you guys saw, I do have maxed out despair and the reason for that is quite simple uh, heal block is very powerful ability in this game and yes it's not going to come into play in every single fight but every single day as you are playing you do definitely benefit from being able to stop opponents healing especially you know in game modes like battlegrounds if despair opponent will power heals less it still might give you a second or two or three or whatever help and obviously questing and alliance war and pretty much everywhere else and the fact is that with max despair, you get significantly more champions that can completely shut down opponent's regeneration. I find that to be extremely powerful. Absolutely love that. And on a side note, in majority of my setups, I also max out inequity because that can give you up to 36% damage reduction. And together with a whole multitude of champions who do have stuff like weakness, some other damage reduction mechanics, some stuff like. Uh, Taunt, for instance, uh, you can hardly take any damage. Uh, one of the greatest combinations, obviously, here can be Spider Ham, because Spider Ham reduces special attack damage. He, uh, Spider Ham has Taunt on him, and then Despair attack reduction. It's incredibly powerful, just as well as Cassie. Cassie can effectively reduce opponent's damage by like 90%. And there are some ridiculous times when I just get, you know, Clapped in the face a ton and absolutely saved by inequity when I'm eating accidental opponents level three. Definitely have won plenty of Balgrounds matches as well with this. And don't forget that inequity also can help you in defense because every time there are some nodes that place debuffs on the opponents, or every time you're going up against champions who debuff themselves, or you use a defender that places debuffs on the opponent, they automatically, you know, suffer further attack reductions. So that is obviously quite significant. And uh, stand your ground basically has kind of also become staple. Again, sometimes I run five, sometimes I run four, but uh, for competitive game mode, stand your ground is incredibly valuable because it just seems that more and more recently against random champions, you get double and triple heavy resist hits. Like I have had times when I activate heavy with Tiger and all three hits get resisted against like Nefuri and I just get wrecked, for instance. So stand your ground definitely can make a very big impact as well. So those are kind of like the less so well hidden secrets, but all of these masteries that I mentioned, I uh, pretty much uh, consider a must for a complete mastery setup for the higher end players. Obviously, there are a whole bunch of other things that are extremely kind of like staple like, like you're maxing out recovery, maxing out block proficiency to reduce the chip damage, maxing out precision and cruelty, or maxing out mystic dispersion. Last point that I'm going to mention here is that Mystic Dispersion, you pretty much always want five. I still hear people saying like three is fine or four is good. And no, five is significantly better for like uh, two different reasons, three different reasons, really. Number one reason is that it's significantly more dangerous on defense. Simple as that. If you have MD5, every single one of your Mystic Defenders automatically becomes more dangerous because it is 
something that opponents have to respect more and they can't be as aggressive they need to bait out more special attacks which delays the fight and can lead to them messing up so it's significantly more potent in defense for sure offensively i also maintain that md5 is overall an absolutely net positive over md4 because i have heard from a lot of people that with this particular champion you're getting too much power and you get pushed to level three or, or you know it's harder to manage or something and uh, in some fights that might happen but ultimately those are the fights that you're going to destroy anyways like if you have massive influx of power your mystic champions are still going to run through them even if you do need to throw a level three or something like that typically that's not where md Five shines. MD5 shines when your opponent has one or two or three buffs. And that is something that happens a lot more often. Like uh, in more recent metas, when they cross a bar of power, they gain a fury buff that you can nullify, and MD5 gives you a chunk of power. Or when you're going up against tech champions who typically have one armor up that goes on cooldown and then comes back once you have nullified it. And then that extra chunk of power that you get from MD5 makes a big difference it helps you a lot so uh the argument here that i'm trying to get is the biggest impact mystic dispersion will have for your mystic attackers is in the fights in the matchups where opponents will have few buffs and those are the ones that you want the most help in because if opponent has plenty of buffs and you're nullifying plenty of things you're going to be destroying those matchups either way right so that is it. That's kind of my general mastery pep talk recently, I suppose, and my mastery setups. Hope you guys found this useful. And if you did, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit all the good buttons, and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about